Hi, my name is Sarah Otto, and I'm on the pastoral team at Ignatius House. The story of the prodigal son follows immediately after the parable of the lost sheep, in which the shepherd leaves the 99 to go in search of the one stray, and the parable of the lost coin, in which the woman sweeps her entire house in search of one lost coin, despite having nine more, and rejoices when she finds it. Both the shepherd and the woman call their friends and neighbors to celebrate. Rejoice with me, they say. These short parables build up to the longer parable of the prodigal son, a dramatic progression from metaphor to metaphor to the bold, honest truth that God loves and rejoices in all of God's creation. Nothing is discarded. No one is lost forever. God loves you. God rejoices in you. God pursues you and deeply desires your joy. These stories of joyful celebration seem counterintuitive to the somber messages of penance and fasting we are so accustomed to in Lent. But the call to conversion is not the somber event we so often imagine. Repentance and conversion, Jesus stresses, is a cause for celebration. He says, I tell you, there is rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Conversion is about finding oneself again, or perhaps for the very first time, as beloved in God's eyes. This was so true for St. Ignatius, who went through an initial conversion as he recuperated from being wounded in the Battle of Pamplona. But even after his conversion, he was ransacked with guilt about his past, unable to forgive himself, worried that he had forgotten to confess every sin of his youth. He was scrupulous in self-abasement. It took significant time and prayer, but he eventually realized that he had been so focused on his sin, he was blind to his gifts including God's precious and never-ending grace of forgiveness. It is only from that place of feeling loved and gifted that we feel empowered to respond, to put our faith into action. Both sons in this story needed conversion. Both sons were alienated from fully believing in their worth. The younger son was resigned to losing his status as a child, telling his father, I no longer deserve to be called your son. His older brother had spent years living a very scrupulous life and proud of his relative righteousness. Both sons clearly had warped images of themselves and projected those negative images onto their father. Both were incapable of living joyfully, immersed in their father's love. But the father goes out to both of them. And I love that we don't know the whole story. We don't know whether the older brother opts to lay down his resentment and go into the party, or if he refuses to go in, paralyzed by anger, closed to conversion, afraid of his own joy, as we so often are, alienated from himself, his father, the rest of his family and friends. Yet his father continues to reach out to him, imploring him to come to the feast. In this Lenten season, we are all invited to the party. Are you capable of believing that? The invitation is always there. It is never withdrawn. All we have to do is accept it. The call to conversion invites us back home into a life of community, joy, celebration. What are the things preventing you from a life of joy? What experiences are you missing out on because of your own insecurities? What relationships have you taken for granted? What are the deepest desires of your heart that God wishes to grant if you would only allow it? The selfishness that drove the younger brother away, the lack of self-worth that brought him home in resignation, 
the anger and bitterness that stewed in the older brother. Those are the things we're called to fast from this Lent so that we can enjoy the bountiful feast God has prepared for us. The shepherd looks for the lost sheep. The woman searches for the lost coin. The father runs out to his prodigal son and embraces him. And God pursues you. You are worthy. You are the one worth pursuing. You are the pearl of great price. Believe that. Celebrate and rejoice in that.